call the meeting to order. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to June 27th edition of the Midwest City Council meeting. Uh, before we get started, I want to introduce a uh, Carl Albert graduate and future OSU engineering student, Jennifer Lynchfield, sitting next to me. She's been uh, shadowing me all day as mayor of the day, and uh, and this is her uh, this is her first council meeting. So uh, again, thank you for being with us in, all day and enduring what we have to endure. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, could I ask you to? Uh, Come down and offer the invocation. Please stand for the invocation. The pledge will be offered by uh, Councilman Rick Dawkins. I ask you to bow with me, please. Holy Father, we thank you for uh, this beautiful day we've enjoyed today, Father. We thank you for this occasion, uh, these men and women who are serving this city in this capacity of council. Father, I thank you so much for their dedication and their service to this city. Father, the decisions that are before them tonight, uh, I ask that personal agendas be put aside, Lord, and that you'd give them wisdom and discernment. Father, I ask that these decisions be for the good of the whole. Father, we thank you for this wonderful city, state, and this great nation, the freedoms we enjoy, and those who are defending them all over the world tonight. Father, I ask for protection and peace to be upon those who are abroad and those who are at home sacrificing for this great land. Father, I thank you so much for freedom, ultimately the freedom that we enjoy from sin through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in his holy name. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can we go around the horseshoe and have any uh, community-related announcements? Uh, we do, uh, do want to remind everybody the uh, a tribute to Liberty Fourth of July celebration we uh, conducted uh, next week at the regional park or Joby Bonds Barnes Park. It's always a big event, and uh, it'll be a, as big, if not bigger, this year than it was last. So, uh, that word about that, Mayor? yes, sir, please do. Mayor, this is a great community event, as you well know. Uh, you you assisted us in coordinating for several years the public safety efforts uh, to make this a safe and fun environment. And it is a team effort by Team Midwest City. Uh, all departments participate in some form or fashion uh, so that this can be a grand celebration. This is our 75th anniversary. Uh, some special things are planned that will be different. We have some additional food trucks there this year. Uh, we have some wonderful entertainment from Dr. Irv Wagner and his 50-piece stage band that's phenomenal extra special fireworks show and uh, one of the highlights of the evening will be a flyover uh, by the um, uh, the warbirds out of Tulsa who who also fly during our Veterans Day parade that'll be between the two bands at approximately 745 or 8 o'clock uh, please come and join us and have a good time celebrate this great occasion uh, here in Midwest City thank you Mr. Sullivan we appreciate it. it will be a it's a lot of fun a lot of fun and all of y'all have, have passes, so uh, please uh, try to make arrangements to attend. Any other announcements that we need to uh, make? I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, with the 4th of July next, next week, uh, our sanitation service will be, uh, will be altered somewhat. If you have your uh, sanitation service or recycling uh, that, that's uh, regularly scheduled on Tuesday, uh, that that uh, that service will be provided on Wednesday and uh, also wanted to mention that uh, starting July 1st that our transfer station hours uh, will uh, will change uh, instead of closing at 4 p.m. we'll be closing at 3 p.m. So. Mayor I have two shout outs really quick um, one for those of you who attended uh, Made in Oklahoma Fest June 17th 
uh, if you did not make it hopefully you'll make it next year it's a great event attended by a lot of folks a lot of families we appreciate everybody's hard work on that secondly um i'd like to um, make note of the youth golf league that um, kicked off today um, kids were out there um, my understanding is a good time was had by all and thank you to everyone who participated in that and mr sullivan for spearheading that um, appreciate every opportunity as christine said earlier in pre-council um, my heart is with children and so i appreciate every opportunity for young people to have something positive to do with their time so i thank you and i do want to give a shout out to our fire department uh, last week they uh, distributed uh, 62 fire alarms in the original square mile or smoke detectors in original square mile that was in cooperation in conjunction with the american red cross and they just got notification they're getting a bunch more so that program will be pushing ahead too uh, so if you do need a smoke detector in your house, uh, uh, call the fire department. They got some. Um, any further announcements? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move into our consent agenda. In our consent agenda, these items are placed on the consent agenda so members of the city council by unanimous consent can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any one item proposed does not meet the uh, with the approval of all council members or members of the audience wish to uh, discuss an item that will be removed and heard in regular order move to approve the consent second. agenda second I have a motion and a second any discussion any discussion all in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed any abstentions motion carries We'll move into the discussion portion of our agenda. First discussion item is PC 1906 public hearing with discussion and consideration of an ordinance to redistrict from A1 agriculture with a special use permit to I2 moderate and industrial for the property described as a part of the northwest quarter of section 28 township 12 north range 2 west and as shown on the attached maps. Uh, the owner is an applicant is Scott Curry with Bags Inc. Proposed uses for an expansion of Bags Inc. Is Mr. Curry in the audience? Could you come up to the podium, Mr. Curry? Uh, Mr. Curry is out of town, but I am in his stead. My name is Kevin McGee with Bags Incorporated, 1910, 1900 North Sooner Road, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Okay. Have you had a chance to review the staff report? I have. Any questions or concerns? No, sir. Okay. This is a public hearing. This is a public hearing. Anyone having any issues with this, this discussion item? Hearing none, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, sir, for appearing. I appreciate it. You might just stay there because you'll have to come back up. So. Next item is PC 1907 public hearing with this public hearing with discussion and consideration of the preliminary plat for the property as described as a part of the northwest quarter of section 28 township 12 north range 2 west and as shown on the attached maps. Uh, this is a preliminary plat associated with the, uh, uh, the zoning that uh, you all just acted upon. Again, it deals with uh, Bags Inc. and uh, will provide for the future expansion of that facility. Uh, name again, please. Kevin McGee with Bags Incorporated, 1900 North Sooner Road. And I, I'll ask you any comments or questions about the staff report. No. Okay. Public hearing. Anyone in the audience uh, wish to address this particular issue? Hearing none, the chair uh, would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Next item. This Thank is, you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. This is discussion consideration of appointing a replacement on the planning commission to fill the unexpired term of Floyd Wicker. Uh, the chair uh, would like to nominate uh, Jim Campbell. He's a longtime home builder and developer here in Midwest City and also a resident of Midwest City. 
Second. I, have mo I made the motion and I have a second. Uh, I'm sorry, did you have any discussion? Well, thank you. <laughs> I should pay attention. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Next item on the agenda. This is discussion consideration of passing and approving an ordinance amending Chapter 40, Taxation, Article 2, Sales Tax of the Midwest City Code by taking Section 40-45 out of reserve and entitling it Limited Purpose Tax sales subject to tax 75.75 of 1%, which shall be provided for the levy of an additional earmarked 75 hundredths of 1% excise tax to be expended only for the purposes and in the manner specified in the ordinance, establishing an effective date, providing for repeal or severability, codification, and declaring an emergency. Uh, what you have before you uh, between this and the next two items would be uh, the legal documents that would be required to, uh, uh, to present to the vote, uh, to the voters of Midwest City, uh, a uh, proposal to increase sales tax, the, the local sales tax rate by uh, three quarters of a, of a penny. Um, <coughs> It became pretty evident while we were going through the budget process this year that as a result of, of, of flat revenues, uh, in particular sales tax and use tax, and uh, ongoing increases in operating expenses, that uh, we were going to have to address um, uh, in the next year, the next fiscal year, uh, some operating uh, revenue shortfalls. Uh, we also recently uh, received and the council has accepted the, the studies from the, uh, uh, the two consulting firms that did the fire study and the police study. And both of those studies had a series of recommendations contained in them as to things that needed to be done and improvements that needed to be made within both of those departments. So having recognized that, that we have some revenue issues, that we have some additional needs in order to enhance and improve our services, uh, particularly for our police and fire departments, uh, and the fact that we continue to have operating increases. Uh, we felt like we needed to present, present and bring forward uh, a solution to this. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the one that, that we landed on was a, was a sales tax increase. Um, it represents uh, sales tax and use tax represents about 76 percent of our operating general fund and so it has the greatest opportunity for helping helping us to address these revenue shortfall issues and these needs to improve the operations of the city so uh, the the proposal is to increase it from 3.85 um, and add 0 0.75 which would which would increase the sales tax rate uh, if you add the, the, the state sales tax rate into uh, to 9.10. Uh, the way the uh, proposal is slated now, 42.6% uh, of the revenue from that increase in sales tax would go to the police fund, 28.52 would go into the general government capital outlay and operating funds, and then 28.88% would go into the fire fund. Uh, as I said earlier, this will help us to address some of the shortfalls in staffing that have been identified through, the st through these studies. Uh, it would allow us over the next three years to increase uh, by six the number of patrol officers in the police department. And it would also in the next two years, uh, in 2019 and 2020, uh, allow us to add three three additional firefighters, and through the uh, uh, through the additional revenue, it will allow us to uh, maintain our current operation levels as well as uh, uh, maintain and preserve the the fund balances that we need to preserve within the uh, within the different departments. So, um, I'd like to go ahead and and turn this over to Tim Lyon, our assistant city manager, and for him to. Uh, to be able to walk through some of the uh, 
uh, the, the, the details uh, as to um, our current revenue situation, where we've been at over the last five years, where our expenditures have been, and uh, kind of how we got to uh, this pr proposal as, we, as you see it in front of you this evening. <clears throat> yes, go ahead and bring it up, Billy. We just have a short PowerPoint presentation that we'd like to, to show the council and, and to the citizens and to the audience, and then we'll have some question and answer time. This is, uh, this is something we've been looking at for really two years as we look out five years and ten years in our future for the city and how we fund the city and, and what our expenses look like and our capital improvements and, and capital outlay needs. And, and so we've had some concerns for a while because as you can see, we'll start with just looking at a pointer going here. Council can't see this, but um, you can see in 2013, 14, going back, looking at five years that um, revenues expenses, our revenue is very flat. I mean, it's been down some years and, and as, as we look at the fiscal year we're coming up into, we're really looking at 15, 16 numbers as far as revenue. So we're almost going back two years to fund revenue, but our expenses certainly aren't going down though they're our department heads and have done a good job maintaining their expenses, but they can only do that so long. And, and so you can see where we're starting to um, greatly exceed the amount of expenses over revenue, and so we're we're heavily easing into our fund balances. And we've maintained over time a 10% fund reserve in the general fund, and for the police and fire departments, they're required to maintain a 5% reserve. And those reserves are in, in critical times, where if we had a tornado come through or some natural disaster that's unforeseen uh, or a really severe downturn in the economy that we would have enough money to operate at least for a short period of time. And then the general fund is a greater percentage of 10% because that is really the only place in the city you have to go to to really gain access to money in, in, in critical times. But if you look at um, the last, well really just, there's a little bit of an anomaly here in 13, 14, and that's because we transferred $1.7 million in capital that year because we had, we, we had not, had access to capital in the general fund for some time, so it was time to move some money there. But in year 16 and year 17, you can see that we are negative 781,000, and so that is really the year that, that's the year that we're in right now, this fiscal year that we're wrapping up. So it's still, we still have another sales tax check to go before we, before we um, have final numbers, so there's asterisks up there. But you can see it's a large number that, that we're, um, we're eating into our fund balance this year, 781,000. And then next fiscal year is going to be an interesting year. And, and these numbers are really, it looks like we're only $407,000 um, of expenses over revenue. But the reality is there's, or 646,000, I'm sorry, I think I said 400, 640,000 roughly that um, is expenses over revenue. but. It's really a higher number than that because we transferred, as everyone knows, we transferred $925,000 into the general fund to be divided between the general fund operating departments and the police and fire departments. And the way we did that is we took uh, $100,000 from water, one hundred and fifty dollars from sewer, um, one hundred and fifty dollars from our sanitation, $25,000 from stormwater, and then we took 250,000 from downtown and 250,000 for our hospital authority. So we had to move a lot of money to a one-time transfer of the money that we can't continue to do over more than one year, really, to, to make our budget this year for everyone in, in the general fund and police and fire. And also, we subsidized our retiree health insurance by 350,000 out of um, downtown the hospital authority. So that kind of sets up for our next slide. So this is a five year, five years of revenue versus expenditures. Um, just for the, for the police department. So the last one was for the general fund. The next one is 
is police and Eugene and City Tim, Police. Tim, you might talk a little bit about that the general fund, the money comes into the general okay. and then it <clears throat> splits out. So through votes of the people and the way the money is divided um, out of the general fund, so we saw the, go back to that original slide. So you can see the, the for this next fiscal year, we're gonna have revenue of 37 million 506, <coughs> expenditures of 38 million 152. So 62% of that revenue is distributed out to the police and fire departments. 34% goes to police, 28% to fire, and then the 38% remains in the general fund. Okay. So we look at the police department. Police is, um, you know, much similar as you as you looked at um, the general fund from their expenditure side. We're experiencing very little growth in the revenue expenses in police have held fairly fairly consistent at 12 million six five six but for next year we're looking at 12 million nine eighty six and that is really that is no growth in any staff personnel that's just being staffed at the current levels that we have now so this fiscal year we're in we're negative 426 is what we're, we're projecting in the police department and then um, next fiscal year they're another negative 400,000. So um, they're obviously eating into their fund balance very significantly. Next slide. And then that number, that 2017-18 number for revenue from police and then additional money to the police and general fund. Right, so without that, the revenue at 12,586 has the For revenue for expenses. I'd like to make a comment also just for clarification. The the projected numbers for 2017-2018 also do not include any increased expenses based upon our police or fire study as they're up there currently. Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, there, there's no no changes to staffing or capital or any of those other items that are critical to the infrastructure that's that's correct so let's look at the next slide which is the fire department you're, you're okay go back that one I was one behind you fire departments very similar looking at um, 16 and 17 a three hundred and three thousand dollar negative um, impact on their fund balance of expenditures over revenue and then this next fiscal year um, 349,000 with this 925 infused. So obviously they're they're getting critical into their fund balances. They've gone up down over $600,000 in two years. And you know you look at at the prior years and our revenues expenses. We really had um, we have really done a really good job in our finance department of hitting our revenue projections in the past. But with the downturn in the economy, our revenue is really significantly down this fiscal year versus our projections. And that's really the first time we had seen that level of impact um, this fiscal year without, act, without projecting it. Okay, next. So um, we talked about, I've kind of gone through what we did by um, the 350000 in revenue for the retiree health insurance to help the departments uh, fund a portion of the retiree benefits. One of the changes that we made with the health benefits committee that, that reviews our premiums and how we fund um, our health benefits plan, one of the, they did make some changes. One of the changes was to transfer the liability and fix it at 60% of the retiree paying and 40% just the amounts that went to police and fire with that 925 that we talked about for the, the 
that we took from the enterprise funds and from the municipal hospital authority. The general fund um, kept 352 of it, 316,000 went to police, 255 went to fire. And that's based upon the percentages that we. Those are the percentages on this gave you the 62% that is uh, going to police and fire. And then you can see the breakdown on the 350 that of the hospital um, authority in downtown that went into the subsidy who, how much went to the community. You can see 30,000 went to general fund, 112 to police, and 107 to go to the fire. There's a, a much greater number in retirees and our health benefits plan um, from police and fire. Okay, so this slide, we're looking at um, our budget without any revenue enhancements in 2017-18. Um, it's kind of an overview on what would, have, what would happen. What has happened to the year-end fund balances? That's really the, the number that we're looking for is these fund balance numbers. And... Um, We have, you can see the reserve that's required and how much is left in, in these budgets. So between police, um, there's $71,000 left out of unreserved. The 5% that we've talked about that they, we asked them to keep in reserve for, um, for catastrophes is $17,000. So those numbers would be would be negative three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. They would be into their fund balances. We not done what we did with the nine twenty five. That's a really critical number. We would be significantly into into those operating budgets. They would not have any fund balance. They would not have any fund balance at all to go with either, other than just a very small amount of money. Next slide. So <coughs> This slide, we're just we're looking at 18, 19 numbers. What happens if we don't have a, a revenue enhancement or an increase in sales tax? Now, where we're at in the last slide, we were, you know, we still had a little bit of money in fund balance. We had 280 and 100,000 left in police and fire. Um, next fiscal year, if we don't have a sales tax increase, then we are $788,000 in the hole and six hundred forty-seven dollars in the fire department. So those numbers are significant for us to, to have a 5% reserve. It's going to take uh, and make the budget. It's going to take over a million dollars. slide so five-year estimate on the general fund just kind of if you look at really you're looking at um, this would be with the 0.75 what the general fund would look like and so we would grow revenue in the general fund for the first two years year three it would be pretty much break even <coughs> Of revenue versus expenses. Year four, we're starting to go upside down to about 344,000, and then year five, 594,000. And that just shows you um, the 0.75 seems like a, a lot of money, but at the end of the day, it only keeps us operating really for five years. We talk about it, I guess we'll talk about it a little bit later. The, tax that, that's in place. There's a point four oh one five tax in place right now. Sales tax for the police precinct. Hey Tim, I'm 
That's a really good point, um, that Councilman Byrne makes. We did. We we looked at about 17 scenarios that that um, Christy, our finance, Christy Barron, our finance director, on they model data. Um, they've been modeling data for weeks, and um, we looked at 0.645. We looked at. We started out at. took 0.75 for us to have any opportunity to make any changes with this provision. Stated our goal is with this 0.75 is to uh, go ahead and go to the next, next slide. Uh, and police, our goal is to hire three police officers, 18, 19, 19, 22 police officers and another police officer in 2021. where our study said that we had the most need and at certain times of the day we needed the need. And so that's where we plug those in is where we saw the need from the study. And you know you look at, at this and once again I mean we grow we grow some fund balance for a little while but at the end of the day when we get to year five we're still uh, about three hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars upside down. So this takes us out five years. It doesn't take us out does it I mean we can still operate we'll have $500,000 fund balance with the property for police and fire at that point. So we'll have some money to make it for another couple of years, but we may be looking at you know, further down the road, seven, eight, nine, ten years in the future. And what impact it'll have with the point four oh one five sales tax and if we need any of that or kind of take a step back below. I know there's a little bit of concern about going over the nine point one and, and I think everyone on the council was about that as well, but, but you know, we're still competitive in the market as, as far as the sales tax of this lease or proposed sales tax of this lease as it's set here today. Um, but the point four oh one five comes off and takes us you know, back down to the point ten. There is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel though our operator I'm not gonna say our operating funds at that point are probably This is fire. Fire is is uh, very similar to police. One thing I do want to point out on fire. So police is 337 at the end of the five years, starting in 1819, with the the 0.75. It looks like fire is only 89 thousand um, dollars upside down by the time we get to revenue versus expenses in 22 23, but. One of the things that's in, in the fire study is that we talked about hiring three more firefighters in uh, 1920 to put on a ladder truck, to have five firefighters on a ladder truck that gives us greater flexibility to having 17 firefighters on the fire ground for a fire and leaving us with a, an engine company available for the rest of the city. So it's really important that we firefighters but it's also there's you know capital needs and fire are very expensive fire trucks you know, a ladder truck is nine hundred thousand to a million dollars so a, a good engine is four fifty to five hundred thousand dollars so the capital is important and, and so really when we looked at that number I think that the last year it did not include two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of capital in their budget and so really I think that number is is three hundred So that's something we'll continue to work on as we look at, you know, we're, we're trying to look out, like I said, five and 10 years of what our capital needs are. Final slide. 
and we went over what our intentions are to do with the .75 is, is to put more police officers, six police officers um, on the streets and, and three more uh, firefighters in, the, uh, in a ladder truck. Also, we're looking at putting more money into overtime and training for the fire meeting some of the, some of the uh, requirements that ESI believes we need to be meeting in the 250,000 Yes, sir. I noticed on this uh, last slide it just had recommendations for the police and fire. What about the rest of the city and public works? I mean, what, did you have anything on that? What, what are goals you want to do for that? For public works? Or, I mean, any of the other police, public works, uh, parks, any of, the, any of those people are public. Have we, has that thing been discussed? Where we're going with that? Well, we're constantly looking at, at five years down the road. We ask our department heads to submit a five-year capital outlay budget. And we try to go as far as 10 if we can because a lot of the equipment we purchase, we can't purchase in one year, even with any, we, even with the revenue enhancement, especially in the general fund when you talked about Mr. Sullivan and the police department. They're, they're very expensive, and so we end up one- and two-year divisions of, you know, of budgeting As far as as looking at the capital items, we really haven't spent a lot of time looking at the capital in the general fund because this will help the general fund's capital as well. There's no question about that. It will give us more opportunity. The point I'm getting at is we're, we're not ignoring that, correct? I mean, we're, no, because we're we just have the recommendations for the police and fire, but there's a whole other sector. There is a whole other sector, and and as we just went through many hours of budget here. Look, last council meeting was our fiscal budget. Go online, you can see our budget, and there is a section in the budget on capital for the entire city. The capital was pretty light this year. Over on the enterprise side, uh, enterprise side, I will will say that um, we we're, we're very thankful that that we were able to go to the enterprise fund. And, and Mr. Street and Cole and Mr. Manning from the Public Works Department said that we're, they were able to help us find the money that. It really did affect their ability to fund capital outlay. So they were they were pretty skinny with their capital outlay. If it, if it affected anyone, that would have been where I think it was the most impact you know, would be early back. It's a good question. Well, and I think that, that the additional revenue that will enable us to continue to be able to operate at the levels that we're operating now. Will we, will we add um, additional personnel? We'll, we will evaluate those, those needs as they, as they arise. And, and uh, when it makes sense, we'll, that's, we will. We're not when we can afford it. Right now, but yeah. Thank you, Tim. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just want to take a moment to point out a couple of things. <clears throat> the municipal government uh, in the state of Oklahoma, we're under, working under a tax code that was put in place in the 1930s and hasn't been revisited since. That meaning that municipalities are solely reliant on fees, fines, and sales tax revenue to support our day-to-day -day operations. That means supplying you with fire police, sewage services, and water services. We also gain some, uh, obviously, uh, revenue from our enterprise funds, meaning the water, sewage, and, and storm water quality that, uh, that you see on your water bill. With that being said, it's extremely important, and with, we've, had, we've seen a decline in our overall sales tax revenue we can't lay it all on the lap of online shopping, but it's certainly a good portion of it 
is. And the brick and mortar stores are, are beginning to suffer the consequences of that, as we are too. Under the current tax code in the state of Oklahoma, this pits each municipality against each other competing for the same dollar, meaning that we're fighting Dell City and Choctaw, Tacoma Park for those businesses to come into our community rather than going to theirs so we can get that tax revenue. So it's extremely important, very important, that uh, rather than sitting at the convenience of your computer, that you go out to one of the brick and mortar stores and buy the property. Uh, we are getting a little bit of relief from Amazon. Uh, we've, Amazon started collecting Oklahoma State sales tax this year and uh, we've received a little bit. It's not a significant amount by any means, but at least it's a start. So you have to be good, good consumers as well or as good citizens and to keep that in consideration when you make your purchases. And, and uh, if there's a brick and mortar store in the city of Midwest City that can offer that service or that product, then take a little time to go buy it rather than the ordering on the uh, computer and have it delivered to your front door. I know, I know that's a, that's a hard stretch for some of us, and, but, uh, but it's an extremely important because every action has a consequence and online shopping has a consequence and you're seeing the consequences of that right here in this presentation. Uh, we've already agonized over these numbers uh, more hours than I care to, uh, to recall and, uh, and uh, there is no fat in our budget by any means, shape or form. And uh, again, thank you Tim and Christy for, uh, for agonizing over this, we appreciate it. And uh, uh, that's why we're coming to you uh, as citizens and, and we're proposing this sales tax. It's painful for me as well. Uh, to propose this, but uh, we need to uh, we need to plug a nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollar bu uh, budget hole, and, and this is about the only way we can do it. Any other discussion on the uh, horseshoe about this particular issue? Two is the state of Oklahoma is the only one that the municipalities don't get anything off of Avalon. We're the only state in the United States that we don't benefit from. Absolutely, um, and uh, we would invite you to write your representatives and uh, try to correct that issue, but uh, being the, the uh, progress that they made this year, that's probably uh, not a possibility any time in the near future of them addressing that if they can't hire teachers. Um, any, uh, any other further discussion? Bob Tony, 116 West Ridgewood Drive, Midwest City. <clears throat> I know this is a difficult subject and a lot of work has been done on it, so don't, I don't want anybody to misconstrue my questions. I just want to get some clarification on a couple of things, but it, is this being voted on tonight? The, uh, the language of the resolution, yes, sir. Okay. And then when, when this goes to a vote of the people, is this entire document what's gonna be for them to read? I mean, yes, including um, like every street. Mr. Tony, we're, we're on the sales tax proposition. Right. Uh, I think what you've got there is the, is the geo bond issue proposition which is the last item on the discussion. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one here. Okay, thank you. You bet. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, not to, not to second guess the action here, but but we had put this on with the idea of of having discussion and then uh, perhaps coming back in a, at a subsequent meeting for for your approval. So, if it's your desire to to act on it tonight, that's fine. I just wanted to 
relay that that was our intention was to kind of have put this out, give everybody a, a chance to kind of, kind of. Uh, I understand. So, uh, what's in. the wishes of the council? You want wish to proceed or wish to put it off or table it until uh, till the next council meeting? You take no action. going to go with Mr. Henson's recommendation. It's his office that's put all the work into this. I'm just going to have to take his judgment as what we need to do and follow it tonight. Okay. Is that the wishes of the council? Yes. And this item to be tabled until further discussion. And, and I guess, let me just say, this is, um, this is an item that would be available for conversation or input from the audience if anyone wants to to uh, uh, make any uh, comments or observations about it please feel free to do that that's what we're here to do so I guess I guess Tim did such a good job there's not a question to be had so. <laughs> hey, Tim. All well, right. the thing well, that the, the point that I want to make too and, and Tim said it is that and I, I know and I don't want anybody to get construed that the only thing we're looking at the police and fire this is for citywide all the operations within the city and that we're not just looking at those two that we're worried about sanitation water wastewater streets parks everything this is to absolutely benefit, to benefit everybody just not those two entities absolutely well because we certainly don't have the ability to every year pull $950,000 out to cover the shortfalls that we have. So. Absolutely. Well, and without, and I think what Tim showed you uh, is that in, in um, 18, 19, we're, we, can't, we can't do that because the hole is too big to climb out of. Well, one, all one has to do is, to, I, mean, I think municipalities across the state are gonna struggle for the next several years. And I think all one has to do is watch the news the last couple of days and see what one of our neighboring communities is going through right now. And I don't think we want to go through that. I mean, we're, we, we've got to do something now to keep that from happening because if from looking at the numbers, uh, if we don't do something, there's going to be a problem. And we don't want to be in the problem that they're having. Okay, but I have a clarification question. So. Mr. Henson, with regard to tabling this discussion item, does that in any way impact our ability to move into what is essentially the next discussion item about bringing this to a vote of our citizens on October 10th of 2017? What it would be my suggestion, recommendation, that you continue the next three items to the next meeting and then you can take action at that meeting, and that will give us ample time to get Still the- Still use the October 10th date, yes. sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So the chair would uh, entertain a motion to table this item? Motion to table. Second. I have a motion to table, and I have a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Consider the motion to table and be brought back to the uh, next council. Move into the next uh, discussion item. This is discussion consideration of passing and approving a resolution of the city of Midwest City, Oklahoma, authorizing the calling and holding of a special election in the city of Midwest City, County of Oklahoma, State of Oklahoma, on October Tuesday, October 10th, 2017, for the purpose of submitting to the qualified electors of the city of Midwest City, Oklahoma, the question for their approval or rejection of approving ordinance number, and that, that is blank at this point, relating to the levy of an additional excise tax. So this is a compa companion item to the one previously discussed, so we would recommend that this also be continued to the next meeting. Move to table to the next meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second to table. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries to table. Next item. 
and this is discussion consideration of issuing a proclamation calling for a special election in the city of Midwest City, County of Oklahoma, State of Oklahoma on Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 for the purpose of submitting to the qualified electors of the city of Midwest City, Oklahoma with the question for their approval or rejection of ordinance number blank relating to the levy of an additional excise tax. Again, we would recommend that this be continued to the next meeting. Move to continue. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? The motion carries. Next item. I got it. Uh, next item is discussion consideration of potential capital projects to be included in a future general bond issue. Uh, as you know, um, the uh, council appointed a capital projects committee subcommittee um, a number of months ago and the committee has been di diligently uh, working on uh, developing a list of capital projects that uh, might be considered as part of a general obligation bond issue um, and so what I've handed out to you this evening is a is a legal document which includes a, a, a resolution uh, which <coughs> which contains a, a list of four propositions uh, which and and those propositions uh, contain a number of projects that would be voted upon proposition by proposition um, that and would be funded through a through the proceeds from a general obligation bond issue which would be paid for by uh, an increase in property taxes the first proposition uh, addresses many um, long-term recreational needs in the community, uh, renovation of our golf course, uh, our baseball facilities, our soccer facilities, and the construction of a new multi-purpose athletic facility. Uh, Proposition 2 includes funds for public safety technology improvements, replacing our police and fire radio systems, uh, fire department suppression vehicles, protective equipment and related facility improvements as well as a um, renovation of the police training facility and replacement of our storm siren warning system. Proposition three is a um, long, long list of street, residential street uh, projects uh, totaling uh, nearly fifteen and a half million dollars worth of work and um, on, the, on the proposition, uh, there would be 138 street uh, projects done, as well as a number of other projects that would be done um, uh, as well. And then proposition four has to do with uh, financing the uh, renovation, the phase one renovation of the booster station on Felix. So uh, this is, these are the projects that came, came out of the committee. Um, no action is necessary on this. We would ask that you all uh, consider continuing this. Uh, we want to provide you some additional information on each of these projects, uh, and uh, hopefully you all can consider this at, the, uh, at the, the, the meeting in July, first meeting in July. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want to point out this is kind of a two-pronged approach to keeping the city healthy. Uh, these general obligation bond projects would relieve the uh, impact of the uh, overall general budget and allow us to pr proceed with uh, some quality of life issues that need to be addressed, also some public safety issues that need to be addressed, and they're also big ticket items. So this uh, is kind of a two-pronged approach by the council and an approach to, uh, to uh, get us healthy on a fiscal level with the uh, sales tax increase and also improve our quality of life within the city by funding these big ticket items that, that need to be funded that we have been able to move forward with. Um, so uh, again, uh, this, is, this wasn't done in a vacuum. We had actually had a purpose and a, and a method to our madness is a, a two-pronged approach of uh, getting the city healthy physically and also uh, addressing our big ticket needs. So. Uh, with that being said, uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, and we understand that, and uh, you'll be hearing more about these issues in the upcoming months. 
With that being said, uh, Mr. Mr. Tony was wanting to, I think, okay, talk sorry. about that, this item. Appreciate that. Bob Tony, 116 West Ridgewood Drive. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get caught up on this. Uh, so when this goes to a vote of the people, will it go at the same time that the sales tax vote? Or, or, or are we going to ask for it, it, both of these it, at the same time? It, it, that'll be up to the council to set the election when they want to okay. have the elections. And then <laughs> under Proposition 4, it says the ballots used at the said elections shall, shall set out the propositions as stated above, yada, yada. So every one of these propositions can be individually voted for or against? Absolutely, yes. Okay. That's why they're kind of broke out in public safety, uh, quality of life, uh, streets, and then the water issue. And then is it is it going to be, I see how it's going to be stated, but will it, for the voters, will it also have the breakdown for them on the ballot to, so yes. they can see exactly yes. how the monies are going to be? Yes. Used? Yes, sir. Okay. I uh, think that's a requirement by state law. Okay. And then uh, I think this is my last question, and I'll just use uh, proposition number one, for example. It says the identified projects total is 12, th or 12 million 964. And the estimated total is, is 16.2? Yes, sir. Yeah. I just wonder what, what is the What well, we're, we're allowed to specify how 80% of the total, total amount of money uh, is to be spent. And so in this category, Proposition 1, there would be $16,205,000 worth of bond issue money raised. And, and what, we, what, we, uh, uh, what we're doing is specifying how 80% of that money is to be used so that there is a little bit of flexibility if projects go short or if they run long. So. Um, we'll have to spend at least four million one sixty four for the renovations of the golf course, but the estimated cost of the golf course project is actually twenty percent higher than that. You see what I'm saying? So it kind of gives you a twenty percent buffer it, or yes. so. We we can go down to seventy percent, but but in the past we've used eighty percent as the as our as our uh, uh, guidepost, so to speak. Okay, that's all the questions I had. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Is there any further discussion? Is there a is there a place on the website that this can be placed so that Absol between now and next meeting, Absolutely. citizens can look at it? Absolutely. Any further discussion? Chair, to entertain a motion. Well, motion to table to the next meeting. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries the table. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We move into the new business public discussion of our uh, agenda. Uh, Mr. Goslogger, you signed up to, to uh, come and talk to us. It's been a while, Glenn. Yes, Glenn Goldschlager, 1409 Evergreen Circle, Midwest City. Mr. Byrne brought up, brought up something about the other departments, and I'd like to talk about the other departments for a minute here because we've seemed to spend an awful lot of time on police and fire. You know, I was talking to a police officer recently, and he told me about how hard it is to get somebody to be a police officer. You know. Well, there's a lot of people out there who want to be a police officer. Only about one tenth of one percent actually should be a police officer, and and we spend an awful lot of time and effort in this city to make sure that we get that one tenth of one percent, and that's why we don't get in trouble like other cities do. And I really appreciate how much we do spend on our police and fire. So, don't think I don't think about them, but imagine for a moment that how hard it is to get somebody to work at our sewer plant. I mean, when was the last time you saw a seven-year-old get up before this class and go, when I grow up, I want to work at a sewer plant? 
I want to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, smelling the worst stuff in the world. And no, they don't. I think there's a guy back there that's got Mr. Clean look to him that uh -huh. wanted to work at a, at a sewer plant, didn't you, Paul? <laughs> and you know, we appreciate police and fire, but but these people, they ha they have an important job to do, which needs to be done, and we don't tend to give them the respect and appreciation that they deserve. Think about it for a minute. If they fail to do their job, it can cost us up to $10,000 a day. Now that's a lot of money, but think about this. this. The people that have sit in your chairs over the years have made sure that we have a pristine water supply. What's that mean? It means that the water going into Thunderbird Lake, which is what we drink as our principal water, hasn't come out of somebody else's sewer plant. And that's not true of what's up line from our sewer plant. The people in our sewer plant are actually have the lives of the people down river from our plant in their hands. And what they do is important. It is just as important as police and fire. So why do we not seem to appreciate them as much? Look at our water department. We have an incredible water department. They won so many awards for so long that the certifying agency said, please don't send any more of your people down. You're making everybody else feel bad. Well, that's too bad. We've got a, sewer, we've got a water crew that's incredible. And again, they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just at, like the sewer plant. And they care very much about what they do. But even what they do doesn't affect our ISO rating as much as our line people do. In this budget, we are extending out one of our water lines. We know that that's important. We're putting money into, a, into another water tower because we know that's important. But we've cut the number of line workers from six crews down to three. Now, is that really making any sense when we're voting to increase police and fire? Because we understand that with more responsibility with more people, with more homes, with more businesses, we're going to need more police and fire out there to protect them. So why in the world would we cut the number of people that are in charge of maintaining those infrastructure in half? I just think that that was wrong. Our, our fire department, when they drive those trucks through our neighborhoods, it's amazing to me. I mean, trying to get one of those trucks through the original square mile or through these cul-de-sacs and these new developments and trying to get through the trees and the cars on both sides and everything else, that's amazing. And I really appreciate our fire department for the great job they do it. They do. But think about this. Our sanitation people drive those trucks through every single street in Midwest City 52 weeks a year. They stop at every single house in Midwest City, make contact with every single house and pick up their garbage. Yet from 1990 till today, we've gone from 22 sanitation workers to eight. We've gone from six routes down to four and we have no reserve. And yet we're thinking about taking over the garbage on Tinker. Now, if you're gonna cut our sanitation budget, if you're gonna move that money to other things because you think it's more important, if you're going to cut them from 22 down to 8, if you're going to cut the number of trucks down from 6 to 4, then why in the world are we negotiating to take over Tinker's garbage? Now, come on. We wouldn't tell 100 police and 100 fire that you're now going to have to take over Tinker's fire or Tinker's police. So why would we do it to our sanitation department? Don't you think they're kind of giving up enough as it is? Not only have they given up people, they've given up routes. They've given their money to the rest of the city, and now we're going to sit there and we're going to, and we're going to take over the garbage on Tinker. Now, I think it would be great to do. I really do. Anything we do to help Tinker is important, but we can't afford it. Stormwater, hazardous waste, they're important people. You know, our police department, our fire department goes on 80 less, 80% 80 less runs in the last 40 years. They only, only 4% of the runs our fire department make are fires. And that's because of people like Bob Tony and his crew. 
It's because of people like our community development that are making our homes safer. But that doesn't mean our fire department isn't making runs. They're making medical runs. And they know more than anybody else what the obesity epidemic has done to this city, to this state, to this country. They see it every day. They go out with a fire truck, with an ambulance, just so they have the extra help to help the person into the, ambu into the ambulance. So our parks and our streets and our, our, our trails are more than just a quality of life. They're literally life and death when you're looking at people losing weight. Do you know we've got four people working the parks department right now? That's it, there's four people trying to take care of 40 parks and put on all your festivals, and all do all this other stuff. And when I suggested last spring, you know, maybe we don't have the time anymore to do the holiday lights. You said, oh no, we'll do it. Well, we don't, and this is my opinion only. Four people cannot put up a million lights. Four people cannot maintain the holiday lights. Four people can't do that, even if you want to do it. Why not give Parks Department a break if you want to run them with that small number of people. If you want to take money and transfer it out of public works to other things because you think it's more important, then at least give them a break and take one of the things they're responsible for away from them so they've got a little bit of breathing room here. You know, I love pu public works. I love the other departments. We, say, we seem to just forget how important they are. It's just all police and fire police and fire, and, and I love them, but we've gotten to the point in this city where we think, that, we think that thanks, respect, and appreciation is a finite amount. That if you try to say something nice about any other department, you're automatically taking something away from them. And I'm not. I love our police and fire. Do you know this 75th anniversary is more than just an anniversary for our city? It's 75 years in which <clears throat> our police department's never lost a person you know, that's really something to say. 75 years, I wish I could say the same about our fire department. And I love these guys, and I wanna make sure they get everything they want. But I believe that for all our departments. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Goslogger, <clears throat> let me assure you one thing. There's not a person on this horseshoe that doesn't have equal admiration for the other departments in this town. Now, Holiday Lights, for example, is a team effort. It's a team Midwest City effort. Four people don't put up those lights. Mr. Sullivan's group as a whole put up those lights and volunteers help maintain them during the week. You know that. Uh, four people manage it. You're absolutely right. They manage, they manage, actually five people if you include Susan down at the uh, visitors center, uh, she's included in that. And we understand that. And we rely on our department heads that if they come screaming for help, we're gonna try to provide that help. Through Mr. Henson's assistance, we'll provide the funding, we'll find a way. But we all appreciate, and believe me, I get a lot more calls if your toilet doesn't flush and take the bad stuff away than I do if the a police department didn't show up in three minutes. So I'm very cognizant, and as is everybody on this horseshoe, the importance of every four, uh, 438 employees we have in this city. And I've gone, I've taken extra steps since I became mayor to ensure that each employee, regardless, is aptly recognized for their service and appreciated for their service. And, and I will continue to do so as long as I'm sitting in this chair. And I've got six other partners in this process to do as well. I appreciate every time you come down here. Don't get me wrong. And I love the conversations that we have. And I love your commitment to our city. But, and I also assure you that we appreciate the rest of the departments. Unfortunately, the police and fire come to the headlines. They're the headline makers. The folks that are picking up the trash and flushing the toilets and doing all that stuff that we need to happen don't get a lot of the flash. 
but they're equally as appreciated and I will pat them on the back every chance I get. And I promise you that as long as I'm sitting in this chair. Is that a deal? That's a deal. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. sir. Could, could I, um, not that I, I want to be a fact checker, but I do want to be a fact checker. Paul, could you come down and, and shed a little light on, and, and Glenn, you know I love you, man. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I do want to thank Glenn for obviously noting how important uh, both water, sewer, sanitation, stormwater, street department, parks department, that's important, and I appreciate your support as uh, council persons and the mayor that's not always easy I know to make those tough decisions so I want to start off by saying that I, I do want to correct a couple things um, we do not we didn't downsize the line maintenance uh, we did consolidate we took water and sewer and it was part of the restructuring that Tim helped spearhead and and obviously help put Vaughn where he is to, to help organize that and make it more efficient so we didn't lose line crew uh, crews as far as the people that are actually out there doing work on maintaining our distribution and collection system same number of crews now that we have before they're just all under line maintenance instead of being you know and, broken and out as water and wastewater and we enhanced the 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 positions did we not correct so so, so let's past, talk a little bit about that so absolutely so in the past unfortunately um, they were very they were quite a ways down on the pay scale uh, and and obviously those those positions weren't really being paid based upon the certifications they had and that's no it's it, it actually was a coordinated effort between uh, the assistant city manager and uh, Catherine Wilson the HR director and the public works director to make sure that we assessed those positions and got them uh, at a much better more livable wage uh, just to I mean the, here's the fact uh, about eight out of every ten employees that worked in line maintenance had to have money both through the, from government aid, state aid, just to feed their families. They didn't have, they, the salary they made was not enough to support their family. I don't know about the rest of us in this room, but I guarantee that's not the case for most folks that sit here and on a, on a regular basis have to make decisions. It was a pretty tough, tough situation to be in. So we were able to look at those jobs, look at what the certifications, the required certifications, and be able to bump those, thankfully, with the, the support of the city manager and obviously the staff for the city uh, got those pumped, bumped up where they should be. And then as far as the trash, uh, I, I do want to mention, you're right, we had a significant reduction in the number of residential route service persons. Uh, but that's because it went from rear load trash collection to automated side loaders. Obviously that decision was made before I was directly involved, but what that does is instead of having to have three guys per truck, you have one. So. You know, his numbers, I think you said about 22, if I'm not mistaken, down to, to, to six or eight. So, so that if you look at those numbers roughly, that's a third of the same number of people. We're still picking up the same trash we had to before, but it's being done with fewer people because we've become a little more efficient. You know, those trucks are more expensive and they break more frequently, but we're able to do it with fewer people. So that obviously reduces the overhead. The commercial side of sanitation, which you didn't bring up, is, is absolutely the same. It hasn't changed. Same number for staffing and same equipment that we've used before. So any reduction has been simply making these more efficient and it's through attrition. We didn't fire anybody, they didn't let anybody go. It was through attrition that we were able to do that as we changed over to automated side loaders. And I think that it's our responsibility where we, where we can see how to make improvements to our operations uh, and streamline them and make them more efficient. It's our responsibility to do that. So, and I, I guess, Glenn, just so to be, to be clear here, the, the sales tax proposition is, is an effort to, to not make us have to go into the enterprise accounts like we did in 17, 18 in order to be able to support the general operation side. We want to not have to do that in the future so that we can leave the money in those enterprise accounts to pay for the, the, the water department and the sewer department and the sanitation. We're not, so that, that's part of the objective here. So, Mr. Sullivan? Before Mr. Sullivan comes up, Glenn, I want to tell a little story to you. Several years ago when I was a, a young police officer in Oklahoma City, I disagreed with what one of the city councilmen did. I knew him well enough to approach him, and he had made a decision that was against the police. 
and I thought it was against the police, and it was a financial deal. So I went up and asked him, what were you thinking? And he explained to me that he could not sleep at night knowing that if he did what he did or made the decision that would support public safety, there was people that were out there in the middle of the night digging ditches to try to get a water main fixed that weren't going to get the equipment they needed. And I remember that still, and that was 25 or 30 years ago. And I, I think I've shared that with Matt a couple times. I don't want to get that way. In fact, Matt and I met with that city councilman soon after I was elected because I remember that. So uh, I echo what the mayor said. You know, Glenn, I love you too. Yeah. You've always been a big supporter of public works and everything that we do uh, to keep this oper keep our operations uh, running efficiently. And uh, I do want to tell you that uh, it is a big job uh, to do what these guys, these ladies and these gentlemen do uh, to service this city and provide quality uh, of life in this city uh, with the amount of people that we have. And we are shorthanded, but we're shorthanded uh, due to some circumstances that were out of our control. There have not been, Mr. Henson, Mr. Lyon, Mayor Council, no one has cut any positions in next year's budget. We'll have the same number of men and women we do. We're competing right now uh, with a workforce uh, that is, it's incredibly competitive. Uh, if you can, if you have a Class A or a Class um, B or uh, CDL driver's license, you can do, uh, you can make some pretty good money in this state, uh, hauling things for for oil field and and other things, and so we compete with a, a very tough market. Uh, we are shorthanded in the Parks Maintenance Department. There are only four right now, but come Monday, when we're setting up for Tribute to Liberty. Everybody in that department will have an assignment associated with that event. And so it will be all hands on deck to make it happen. We've been privileged in uh, the street department over the years to give your support, city managers, both city managers and this mayor and council's support to buy some very nice equipment. We're being, a very, we're being very efficient with our mowing operations, much more efficient than we were uh, 10 to 15 years ago when I came on board and we have some nice equipment. We can cover a lot of ground with the fewer people. Uh, but these guys and gals do an amazing job uh, keeping this city looking really nice and providing a lot of quality of life. Uh, and, it, and it's tough sometimes, but we get the job done and they pull their boots up every day and they get up here and they get the job done. But uh, there will not be anything next year uh, be any different. You'll continue to see high quality in this city. It'll look good, it'll be clean, and all the services will meet all of the requirements of all of our permits on both water and wastewater. I don't think you'll see any change in the level of service in this city. And one other thing, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna, I want you to answer this question honestly. Glenn, he's my neighbor. I see him pretty regularly. He, he's done this before. If I was going down the wrong road, are you shy about telling me? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any further discussion from the audience? Yes, sir. Big business. Craig Dawkins, 721 Hunters Run, MOS City. Two things, since we're talking about a tax increase and it involves the studies, it'd be great if the studies could be prominently displayed on the Midwest City's website as well. Currently, I think they're embedded in the actual meeting document, and that's it. You have to really kind of search for it. So it'd be great if those were prominently displayed. The second thing is, is I'm curious if uh, anybody's looked at the grass along I-40 in Midwest City. <laughs> Ask, What's ask the Mr. story? Sullivan about that. What's the story? <laughs> it's called ODOT. Does code enforcement need to come out and write the state? <laughs> Could. He looked at 15th Street. <laughs> that's, that's ODOT. I agree with you, Craig. Yes, Mr. Mr. Dawkins, you're right. It looks pathetic. Uh, it makes our entire city look bad if you're traveling through this, through this city. Um, we do mow a few things on that right away. I-40, Douglas, uh, Cloverleaf. Uh, we're looking at doing some additional mowing. The street super, uh, supervisor and myself looked at it uh, yesterday, uh, doing some additional mowing in front of the Welcome Center. 
basically from, from uh, uh, Town Center Drive to um, Air Depot. Uh, quite frankly, I don't want to put our people at risk, Mayor, be out on that right away with the speeds that are out there and the equipment that we use. We're not prepared for that. I'd be willing to take on more of that, but the risk is great. Uh, but you're right. It's making our look. It's making our city look pretty shabby, um, and it's of no fault Roger of ours. Ford so. and Tess Teague. Is there any way that Roger Ford and Tess Teague? Those are the two representatives we need to get on. Is there any way and Jack Fry. I don't know. Is there any way we can put those uh, cones out there or something and block it off for a while and get it cut? You know, I, I, lo I love my brothers and, and sisters in the fire department and the police department, but you ask those ladies and gentlemen what it's like to work an accident up on that, up on that interstate. And they have lots of pretty lights and shiny trucks and cars and things that are equipped to be out in that traffic. And we're, quite frankly, in public works, we're not prepared to be out in that traffic with anything we currently have. And uh, they'll tell you exactly how risky it is. Is there anything the police department can do? Not on grass. I mean, if that's I mean, no for, deal. I, no, I'm, for, I'm saying for us directing the traffic where it can be taken care of. Since it is the city. Uh, chief, uh, chief, can you, I, can, the, the I, fire I, chief's right up there. He could explain the, what, the, what it takes to, when they send the fire truck no, out we, there. We lost a firefighter up there several years ago on the curb. And uh, there's not a there's not a city employee in this city worth uh, mm. getting grass mowed up there. There's not one. Um, you know, uh, ODOT that's ODOT's yes. responsibility. Oh, okay. And, and they uh, they need to hold up to yeah, it's yeah. ODOT's responsibility. And, and we, we need to be we, really we need to lean on them. them. So uh, we'll be making some phone calls tomorrow. Really. Uh, any further new business or public discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll go into the further information portion of our agenda. These are items placed on the agenda for your future information. These will be coming back to you in forms of uh, ordinances and recommendations the next council if there's no uh, discussion on that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. I now call to order the Midwest City Municipal Authority agenda. Uh, we do have a consent agenda. These items are placed on the consent agenda so that the trustees of the Midwest City Memorial or Municipal Authority by unanimous consent can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any item proposed does not meet the, uh, with the approval of all trustees or members of the audience wish to discuss an item, it will be heard in regular order. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. We now enter into the uh, new business public discussion of the Midwest City Municipal uh, Agenda. Any person in the audience wish to bring any new business or public discussion to the Midwest City Municipal Authority? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. I now call to order the Midwest City Municipal, Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority. Uh, we do have a consent agenda. These items are placed on the consent agenda. So that the trustees of the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority by unanimous consent can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any item does not meet with the approval of the, all the trustees or members of the audience wish to discuss an item, it will be removed and heard in regular order. Move to approve. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. We do have one discussion item on this agenda. This is discussion consideration and action to reallocate assets, change fund, fund managers, or make changes in the statement of investment policy guidelines and objectives. No action is necessary on this this evening. No action is required on the discussion item. Any further business or any new business anyone wish to bring to the uh, Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority? 
Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Have a good night.